Imagine that you're chilling in the United States, when all of a sudden the United States bursts in your room and forces you to join them in a Hunger Games event. And I did exactly that. The only difference is I totally gave players the freedom to choose if they wanted to participate or not. Anyways, each player represented a state from the USA. These 50 players would explore the nation, exploring national landmarks, finding legendary weapons, make friends, and fight other players. All to find out once and for all which state in the United States is truly the best one. So choose a state to root for and sit back and relax and enjoy the video. And this video begins in Washington DC. As soon as players were let out, it was a mad dash for the middle which contained chests that had lots of items that players were going to need. As soon as players grabbed what they needed from the middle, they would all immediately start spreading out, going to landmarks that were nearby or just getting on nearby vehicles and riding off in the distance. However, some players decided to ignore the national landmarks and decided that they were going to get all their gear the normal way by breaking down trees and mining. This was a little less efficient than if you actually went to the landmarks where lots of loot was there for you and that there were other players there and this would lead to some of the first teams on the server. Now I'm base. Now I'm base. Now I'm base. Now I'm base. What's good? What team? Within the event starting, there were four teams. Team one consisted of the representees from Minnesota and Georgia, which is Weapon Knight and Naomaze. As for team two, it was the representatives of Nevada and Arizona who teamed up, who were Badar and Wyofs, or whatever you say his name as. Then team three consisted of Time Guy and Veladino, and then there was also team four. As for Yosef and Veladino, these two players would actually come across outlaws, which are the NBCs of the United States of America. And and these guys hit hard. Whenever they see these people, they will kill you. So a lot of players actually ended up dying to these outlaws. And unfortunately for Yosef and Veladino, they would be one of the two first people to actually die to outlaws. After I kind of knew all of the teams on the server, I decided to look for players who didn't have any teams and see how they were doing. I checked in with a player by the name of Adams here, and he had just found a structure down in Atlanta, Georgia. Meanwhile, while Adam was having a good time, Bogenmeister was not having a good time, and he would actually end up being the first player killed on the server. So there's actually a problem with this kill, it's that PvP wasn't actually on yet. So I actually decided that I was going to bring Bogenmeister back by the end of day one, but there was going to be a catch to it. Meanwhile, back to Adams here, he was actually looting the aquarium in Atlanta, Georgia, where he found a lot of things that were super beneficial to him, and when he looked in the gator area, he noticed a little something in there, and so he decided that he was going to actually kill the two gators to get a look into the gator area. And after screwing up a couple of times, he had finally managed to kill both of them. Ho 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 ho! Look at you. Adam would find one of the many legendaries scattered across the United States, and this is the Gator's Tooth. Not only does it do it a lot of damage, but it also gives enemies weakness, making it a very dangerous weapon. However, Adams here wasn't the only one to find a legendary weapon, as up north, the representative of Massachusetts named Dread Penguin would find his own legendary weapon. This is the Frost Slayer. This ice weapon has the ability of doing extra knockback and also does tons of damage with this sharpness effect. With his new legendary weapon in hand, Red Penguin would load up his motorcycle full of fuel and then immediately start riding out. Meanwhile, along the east coast, the duo Weapon Knight and Naomaze would come across a lighthouse, and in this lighthouse actually contained a legendary weapon known as the Staff of Liberty. This weapon deals lots of knockback and can be thrown an infinite amount of times, however, it has a drawback. Ow! I'm sure this won't be a problem for the future. I decided to check in with the duo of Primal Potato and Gamek, and they were actually in a fried chicken restaurant down in Tennessee, where a legendary weapon was hidden in this furnace right here. However, if they were going to find this weapon, I had no idea, but I was sure they were going to find it eventually. Oh, come on, look at him! Let's find the Kentucky Fried Fighter. <laughs> look in the furnace! <laughs> look in the furnace! Meanwhile,
Meanwhile, Adams here had traveled all the way to Arizona where he had come across a prison and in this prison contained lots of outlaws along with some other prisoners and then finally it contained one legendary weapon. But in order to get this legendary weapon, Adam would have to face all of the mobs surrounding the prison. Adam immediately ran into this prison, not holding back, taking on the outlaws and almost dying in the process multiple times. However, eventually after struggling quite a bit, he would finally get to the roof of the prison where he would break into every prison cell. And this is where he would find his second legendary weapon, the Sun's Grace. The Sun's Grace is not a heavy hitting weapon, but it actually heals you every time you use it on an enemy. Meaning that if Adam is able to use this weapon right, he could possibly be one of the most dangerous players on the server. While Adam was out here getting stacked, there was actually a team that was about to gain another member. It all starts with the representative of New York, General Skywalker. Starting off, General Skywalker actually had no friends and had separated himself across the map. This actually allowed him to find multiple structures and get stacked pretty quickly. His biggest obstacle was a boat that he found in Boston, which was full of outlaws, and after seeing in chat all the players who actually died to this thing, he decided he was going to take the safe way in looting. After he felt pretty satisfied with gaining all of the loot, he decided he was going to head downstream, and this is where he would meet Naomi's and Weapon Knight. Hello. Yeah. Creating the first trio on the server, this trio immediately caught up and got to know a little bit more about each other and discuss things that happened to them during the event. And now that they were all great friends, they decided that they were going to continue exploring and this would get them to southern Florida where they would come across a beach full of loot for them to take. After they looted the beach, they decided to go more into inland Florida where they would come across a lake that was full of alligators. Oh shoot! There's so many! Watch out, watch out, watch out, there's so many! Oh my gosh, there's After seeing the massive amount of alligators, the team knew that they had no other choice but to take these alligators on. And instead of running away from the alligators, they pushed on, trying to get into this lake as in this lake contained a legendary weapon. The trio fought off a ton of alligators, and they actually saw no way of actually getting the legendary weapon, which was right on top of a spawner inside the lake. However, they actually started looting around the area, which contained a house full of a couple of chests, and one of the chests inside the house contained an invisibility potion. Aomaze decided to take the risk and drink the invisibility potion, and then he would jump into the lake and hopefully not get eaten. But then, things went totally wrong. General Skywalker was trying to fend off the alligators when all of a sudden he was nabbed by one. Seeing General Skywalker in distress, Naomi's went to his rescue. General Skywalker would manage to escape the alligator's grasp, but as for Naomi's, he was grabbed by the alligator and dragged into the lake where the alligator did a death spin and killed Naomi's. You can press... Uh no! However, the players wouldn't be griefing over Naomi's death for long, as inside this house, a totem was actually inside of this chest, and in the event, you can use the totems to revive dead players. As soon as General Skywalker got hands on the totem, he used it to revive Naomi's. Finally, the trio would grab up all of Naomi's stuff and then immediately head out of Florida. And yes, they were actually able to get the legendary weapon known as the Venom Glaive. With this weapon, I'm actually interested to see what this team does later on. While all of this was going on, it took GMAC and Primal Potato almost an hour to finally find the legendary weapon that was in the furnace. This weapon is actually so good that I'm gonna let GMAC explain exactly what it does. Okay, Firebrand. Legend legendary. Burns mobs. Burn mob hits. It Unbreaking 3, Sweeping Edge 3, Mending, Looting, th there's a Looting 3 on this, Sharpness 5. Let's just say these two were awfully happy to finally have this weapon. And after checking out these two guys, I decided to check on some more players. I started off with checking in on Cross Lim, who was mining for better gear and guns. And then I went over to go and check on Badar, and he was actually at the prison in Arizona where Adam was. And he was a little disappointed to find out that the legendary weapon was already taken. So I eventually finally brought Bug and Meister back to life. And this is where I introduce you to the bounty event. You see, since Bug and Meister died in an unfair way, I decided that I was going to give him a second chance at life. All he has to do is to survive 45 minutes with his coordinates getting linked constantly, and then he has to choose one landmark where he will go and hide and make his last stand. And when he found this out, he wasn't too happy about it. 
Wait! <laughs> Wait! <laughs> Hogenmeister decided to make his last stand in the Washington Monument, and little did he know, a lot of players were actually super close to this location, and they were all closing in on where he was. As soon as the players arrived, they immediately started storming into the Washington Monument, and for some reason, the bounty hunters decided to team up with one another to kill Bogenmeister. Bogenmeister, knowing that this might be his final chance to actually survive, threw as many flash grenades as he could at the enemy players. Come up there. Oh, However, these players were more than determined to actually kill Bogenmeister. Oh. No! Oh my god, what? He broke my He broke my No way! No way! No. Oh no! Get out! <laughs> 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 Since they managed to kill Bogenmeister, they were able to pick up the bounty ticket, and with the bounty ticket, they could turn it into me for a reward. Little did I know, as they were looting, they were actually attacked by Dread Penguin. Oh my god! Oh! <laughs> I got him! I got him! I got him! Let's go! I didn't think that would work! <laughs> let's go! Oh, let's go! He had so much good stuff. After that insane kill, General Skywalker and Weapon Knight decided to head over to where Spawn is, and that yeah, is where that. I was. They had an option between 35 diamonds or a totem of undying which they could use to revive Naomi's. And after thinking about it for a couple of minutes, they actually decided to go with the totem of undying, which they immediately used to revive Naomi's and then they ran off into the distance. Well, actually, I ended up destroying their car with a minigun and little did I know this was going to cause a chain of events that was going to cause some of these players to die again. The team then split up, both not knowing where they were, and they actually decided they were going to meet at one supply drop that landed pretty close to both of them. Now Weapon Knight and Naomi's had stuck together, however General Skywalker was all by himself. And while General Skywalker was who knows where, Weapon Knight and Naomi's ended up finding Badar and Mazra and decided to fight them. The fight would start off really rough as Naomi's would only last a couple of seconds, leaving Weapon Knight all by himself to try and fight on the 2v1. He was just able to kill Badar, however he was not able to escape the diamond axe that Mazra had. Mazra had won the fight, however they picked up the Staff of Liberty, used it, and this caused them to actually die. Hey, no. <laughs> well, I found everyone's corpses. However, this team got extremely lucky as General Skywalker actually found a totem on Badar's body and then Weapon Knight found a totem and a supply drop. And this would allow the team to unite together once again and it was absolutely shocking.
But as for Mothra and Badar, I actually felt extremely bad for the way they went out, as the Staff of Liberty kill was hilarious, but it was unfair to them. And so I gave them the bounty event, where for starters, I actually gave them a few things because I felt like they were gonna need it if they were actually gonna try to survive, all the people who were gonna come and try to kill them. Then I also gave them a time frame, and eventually all of the players would start coming in their direction, starting with Cross Liam. The subject, oh, wow. <laughs> that actually worked, that's hilarious. Cross Liam hunted these two people down very cocky, thinking he was going to be easily able to take them down with his minigun, however, the minigun doesn't actually do that much damage. And as soon as Cross realized this, he ran for his life. Badar and Mazra decided not to chase after him, knowing that more people were coming in their direction, and they were actually right about this. As soon as people started to come, they decided to build a little watchtower so they could watch from all angles, however, they didn't notice Weapon Knight's team sneaking up on them. I'm hitting them. I'm hitting them. <gasps> Finn Knight's team had caught Badar's team right off guard, and as they continued to try to sneak up on Badar, Badar actually noticed where they were, and a big fight would then take place. The two teams would both get separated. General Skywalker and Weapon Knight both attacked Badar, while Naomaze was left to fight Mazra all by himself. Badar would get overwhelmed from Weapon Knight and General Skywalker, and as he tried to run, he was too slow and Weapon Knight would catch up to him and kill him. Although they had completed the bounty, they completely forgot about Naomaze, but when they went over to check on him, he was doing just fine, causing Mazra to run away and he was able to kill Mazra. After killing the bounty and the bounty's teammates, Weapon Knight's team had become a completely stacked team. Almost every member in this team had full diamond armor, and now all they had to do was head back to the nation's capital to deposit the bounty. Because this was the last major detail of day one, I'm gonna go over some minor details that happened during the end of the day. For starters, Primal Potato made a new friend, but then immediately got jumped by a bunch of alligators where he was then killed by all of these alligators. Once Golden Knight saw this, he said, ah hell nah, I'm out, and he ran for his life, where he would then come across G-Mac, and G-Mac, seeing that his friend originally died, decided to join hands with Golden Knight to retrieve the totem that Primal Potato had so they could revive Primal Potato. Once they revived Primal Potato, they decided to create the ultimate Florida gang trio, and they decided to kill as many alligators as they could for alligator chest plates. Once they did this, they would then find their own truck where they decided they were going to go on a road trip all the way to Texas. And when they reached Austin, Texas, they would come across this massive house, and when they saw all the possible loot that could be inside here, they decided that they were going to go and try to get some of that loot. However, it was fully guarded with outlaws, and these outlaws would actually end up killing Golden Knight. While all this was going on, Blinky would actually come across Cross Liam, who had been mugged by a random player that he had never seen before. Instead of killing Cross Liam, Blinky showed kindness and decided to spare him. And that is where day one comes to an end. Day 2 started off with a jolly feeling. New people were being introduced, and new teams were forming, and old teams were exploring. It seemed like a great time to be alive in the United States. However, the teams and players didn't know that I have a little surprise for them. You see, I represented myself as the US government because I wanted to. And I didn't think there was enough conflict going on in the server, so I decided that I needed to create some. So I chose one player to be a spy and to create conflict between teams. This player would start off like any other player, go looting, find structures, and maybe if they're lucky, find a legendary weapon. The player I decided to be the spy was none other than dashing. He also had a legendary weapon, and this legendary weapon not only gives the user a dashing ability, but if you use the dashing ability, you will then be given strength, making this a very scary weapon. With the Nightmare's Blade, Dashing ran off to go and find some players to mess around with. Day 2 really highlighted this trio, consisting of Sensible Data, M, and Gaming Sam. This trio had stuck together for a while now, but weren't very well known until day 2. It all started like this, the trio were walking around when one of them was jumped by a rocket and that was Sensible, and Sensible was killed almost immediately. After that, M and Gaming Sam decided they wanted to stay away from this fight, however, I pursued that they continue on. Okay, a missile, you can't dodge it just goes at you and it blows up. Don't be a 
You're right, let's go. <laughs> because side note, M actually has a legendary weapon known as the Dark Katana, which allows him to teleport short distances. They had no other option, however, Dashing came out of nowhere with a totem offering to revive Sensible, in return, he would join their team, and they reluctantly accepted. Now the guy that killed Sensible ended up killing himself with his own rocket, and this would leave time for Dashing to revive Sensible. On their way to turn in the bounty ticket, this squad committed some unspeakable crimes, breaking out the seeds from farmed land and then jumping on the farmed dirt in front of the eyes of the farmer, which is by far a complete huge crime. Ekrat then sent a formal complaint to the US government, aka me, basically saying that what these guys did was unspeakable and they should be thrown to jail. So I sent Dashing a little letter to go and send them to the Sunshine Institute. While Dashing was taking his own team to the Sunshine Institute, Weapon Knight and General Skywalker stopped by in Texas to play a little old shooting game. All they had to do was shoot all of the targets and not miss a single time and in exchange they would get a reward. And since Weapon Knight was able to not miss a single shot, he was given a shotgun named Julie. Julie. Take good care of her. And then to end the day off, Em and his squad were all sent to jail right where they belong. And that is where they would stay all the way to the end of day two. And starting with day three, we were going to visit them quite immediately, where they were going to answer a couple of questions, and if they got them right, then I would let them free. After some intense questioning and some intense challenges and lots of death that I totally didn't do on purpose, I finally decided to let these players free. Y'all are free. Okay. What? <laughs> we get freedom just to get locked back up. These two players, then after escaping prison, went over to the Alamo in Texas where they defended this Alamo against waves of outlaws. And despite these two players going up against at least hundreds of outlaws, they barely managed to survive and secure a victory for the Alamo. After that, the players were then given a reward that they were very happy of. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, he's dual wielding pistols. Now it's time for the Protect the President event, where multiple players would come and try to protect me, the president, and right off, I knew these protectors were going to absolutely suck. They didn't even give me fresh water. And their job was to simply escort me to the Washington Monument. I also added two things for the hunters. One, the hunters were actually the people I imprisoned earlier, so they had a really good motive to kill me. And two, if anyone were to die that were involved in this event, I wouldn't count their death. And so with all of the rules set in stone, we got into the van and headed all the way to Washington DC, where we immediately ran into the hunters. Firefight would take place when we ran into the hunters, and immediately GMAC, who was my now designated driver, drove me away from the entire thing because the van was shot multiple times, so we had to get out of there. While we were getting out of there, we also realized that our fellow protectors were running away too, so we knew we had to pick them up as well. And so after picking them all up, we went over to the Statue of Liberty, which was in New York City, and yes, this is the Statue of Liberty. It was here where the fighting would be the most intense, and I would almost die multiple times while I was here. A lot of my bodyguards ended up dying, but we were also able to kill a lot of the hunters. <laughs> I just got jumped, I'm drunk. The timer was running out, and I knew I needed to get to Washington, D.C. as fast as possible, otherwise the hunters would have won. And so we booked it over there, and I ran and hid in the Washington Monument, and this would not be a good idea, as now I was surrounded on all sides, and the enemy were slowly pushing to my position. After one long final stand and one minute left on the clock, M would use their legendary weapon to teleport to the roof of the Washington Monument and would slay me. 
Since the hunters had won, I gave them each a reward, and after giving them this reward, Dashing started plotting, and he used the people that originally were protecting me and gathered them all together to hunt a town the exact same people who were hunting me from earlier. When the sun hit, Dashing's team attacked M's team, and when I was watching this, I kind of knew that Dashing's team was going to win. The two teams would exchange multiple gunshots, but M and Sensible Data knew they were going to have to run for their lives. As they were running away, M realized that he was being the one targeted as he had the legendary weapon which allowed him to teleport. And so he decided to use his katana to buy sensible time to escape. And so M would make his last stand, because if he could survive just long enough for Sensible to escape, then Sensible would have a chance to find a totem and revive M. Take one, take one, take one. Take one. Move, 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 run, 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 run. Hey, Sensible, you might just want to run. You might just want to run. Go. Sensible was now all alone, as his team was either dead or had run away from the whole fight. Now, the fate of his team rested on his shoulders. Meanwhile, Dashing's team has become more stacked than ever. Pretty much the entire team has full diamond armor with some pretty nutty enchantments. The only downside is that the Dark Katana, which is the teleporting sword that M was using, was broken and no longer was usable. And so that also meant I would have to relocate that weapon to somewhere new. And so since this team felt like they were super stacked and chillin', they decided to go down to Florida and create a base. However, this team was not prepared for gaming Sam, who had acquired a gun named Riley, which is a very overpowered assault rifle that I accidentally gave him. And he used this gun to completely squad wipe the entire team. This little section would be known as the Riley Incident, and I would bring the players all back to life because Riley was just too overpowered. However, now, the players were now somewhere in New Mexico with absolutely nothing to their names, and they also now went by the Mexican cartel. Also, Dashing had just disappeared and left these guys to die. Maybe we'll see them later, or this could have been the last time we had seen him. The Riley incident was very hard on Time Guy as he had lost almost everything, and most importantly, his beloved van which he had lost, and he was put in an ultimate depression. Meanwhile, Gaming Sam was able to revive M, who had died. And so not only was the trio back together, but they also recruited Ekrat. Back to GMAC, he saw that his leader, Time Guy, was in depression and knew he needed to do something to help Time Guy get himself back together. And so, GMAC went and confronted Time Guy. We left your home because you found a new one. Y you were alone there, okay? Alone there. You don't have to. We have sombreros now. We all sombrero rows now. Me and you potato. Hey, hey. You know what? How about this? Why don't you listen? We have the van. I like the old bear. No, no, no. Hear me out. We have the van. We have. We have the parts to make it diamond again. Mm hmm. We can, we can. We can go back and get our revenge. We can get our old stuff back. How about that? Like, we can get everything back. We just have to stick together. We can't leave. We'll, or, we'll charge into battle with Sombrero Rose. Blasting music and playing the maracas. It was with that the Sombrero Bros has been born. The ultimate team dedicated to wearing sombreros and chanting and shaking with the maracas. To end off the day, Ekrat ended up not being able to make it to the next day's events, so her team decided to send her a farewell in the most formal way they possibly could. 
We are now on to the final day, day four, death day, where multiple teams are now going to go to one area and fight to the death. I had chosen for the final circle to close in on the Alamo in San Antonio, Texas, and since Sensible and M were nearby to that area, their plan was to go there immediately, right before the border even closed in on it. I then went in to go and check on Time Guy, and I found out that him and the Sombrero Bros had been absolutely grinding. This team now had guns, diamond armor, and had stuff that were actually able to keep them from dying immediately. Their plan was pretty simple. They were going to wait for the border to close in, and then when the border closes in, they're going to hop into their van and then drive off all the way to where the Alamo is and come across anyone who comes their way and kill them. Okay, boys. Van. Come on. Van. Okay. Van. If, if, wait, but if we, if we rush in with horses, we'll like two Mexicans. The van will break very easily like a horse by those shots that Survivor di um, displayed. So do we want horses or do we want vans? We're going with the van. That's true. The van has been with it's us van, for a while. Been with us for a while. We can't trade it for horses. I think we're good to set up. What do you boys say? We start getting on the road? Oh, Wanna go to the Alamo and it. raid it? Oh my bad. Let me place it back down. Let's get to the Alamo and raid it, boys! Hey, look at me! Look! We're the line! The tres! Tres amigos! Wait, how do we know we're going the right way? Meanwhile, Adam Seer had finally come out of the caves where he was now rocking almost full diamond armor. On the final day, he wanted to go find some friends and also wanted to go kill people, and along his journey, he came across the shooting range in Texas where he would be able to get a gun. And since he had to guess the name of his reward, he was really happy to find out that he had guessed it correctly. Oh, it was a perfect prediction. Oh, I actually said it was Ripples the Rifle. <laughs> Great job, it's Ripples the Rifle. I would then visit Sensible's team where I had found that they had actually taken over the Alamo early and they were coming up with some pretty good plans and were also doing some pretty funny things. Destroying sacred monuments to get the bikes in. Yeah, if we kill someone. Or if we pray to God. God, we're sorry for our transgressions. Transgressions, yes. Yeah, transgressions uh, against your... Now. Are you flooding the entire pit? It's what purified, purified water. water? <laughs> Why? Where does torches? We go right here. God. And it'll continue this way, so they think we go that way. So we're gonna continue. I'm gonna continue digging that way. Cause there's an exit right here. All right. What happens if that's out of order? Then we're fricked. And then we were back to Weapon Knight's team, where we had found out that he had met up with General Skywalker, and the two were making plans to meet up with Naomi's, but they also wanted to make one final addition to their team before running into battle, and they hadn't figured out who they wanted to reach out to yet. And General Skywalker mentioned the day that Weapon Knight missed, and decided to bring him up to speed and show Weapon Knight the legendary weapon he had acquired, and the two would begin to get along and just talk overall about what they wanted to do. Uh, anyway, he gave me this for winning the, uh, event. I have no idea how to use this, so you can take a look at that. I also got, uh... When killing an entity with more than 7 health, this weapon will stack souls, and when right-clicking, will release them for a temporary half, temporary buff. When killing, you can stack up multiple souls, and then when release, therefore give a stronger buff. 5 souls will max out, uh, blah 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 blah, therefore looting and buffs. This weapon also can apply withering to the targets. Holy cow. And then, a little while later, something unexpected happened. Adams here actually ended up showing up to the lighthouse where Weapon Knight and General Skywalker were, and it seemed like this was going to be the beginning of the ultimate team. Wait, what gun's name is that? I got Julie. You got two legendary dice. Uh, we have... Do we still have the other one? What other one? Was it the spear? Oh, I lost the spear. Someone stole it from my one of my bags. Uh, I think I think that's how one of them died. Actually, they died to my spear. Good news, boys. We can now craft vehicles. All right. 
The newly formed team, including Adams here, actually ended up splitting up as Neomez was off in who knows where, and so Adams here went to go and find him, while General Skywalker and Weapon Knight went going to look for players and other structures so they could kill players and maybe get even better loot while doing it. I then came across our old friend Crosslim, who had actually made a new teammate who is named Mintz. The duo was completely undergeared and knew they were going to need some loot, so they decided to absolutely travel around America and hopefully come across a structure with some loot for them to use. They then proceeded to get very lucky as when they went up to Vermont, they came across a ginormous house which contained a legendary weapon. The only problem was, was that this house was guarded completely by outlaws who were absolutely running these guys down. And after this duo duo spent a really long time fighting outlaws, they then ran into another duo, which was Weapon Knight and General Skywalker. The two duos never got into close quarter combat, however, they were shooting at each other a lot, doing a ton of damage with the guns that they were given. Oh, that did damage. And after a really long standoff between Mintz and Crossliam and General Skywalker and Weapon Knight, General Skywalker and Weapon Knight decided it would be best to run away and fight these guys at a later time when they were least expecting of it. The snow is so painful to hit. I, I can't drive this fast in the snow because this bike sucks. Alright, keep going. I don't think they're following us. We'll head to the tree line and we can take cover here. I hope you know, I ran through like all my sniper bullets on them. Oh god. A little while later, General Skywalker and Weapon Knight decided to loop back around to the house. He knew that the outlaws were going to weaken the duo that they had just fought, and they wanted to use this advantage to what they could. So, when they got the chance, they jumped Mintz and Crossliam, and this actually took the duo by surprise, but Mintz was able to return fire pretty well, and this ended up being a pretty good gunfight. Mintz and Crossliam had run out of ammo to fight General Skywalker and Weapon Knight, so they decided to run away. They didn't need to stay there as they had acquired the legendary weapons that they needed. I then decided to visit the Sombrero Bros, where I would interrupt them while they were enchanting their sombreros, and while they were doing this, I decided that I was gonna jokingly call a nuclear strike on these guys. One second, guys. Uh, I need to make some... Okay. Hey, can you get Nevada? Wait, that's all us! In, 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 in. <laughs> I then decided to check in on Naomez, who actually came across a looted gas station. He was looking for General Skywalker and Weapon Knight, as they had hinted that they were at a gas station, and actually, they were, but just on the complete opposite north side of the map where Naomez was. In this gas station, there was loot, like food, water, guns. However, the trio would eventually reunite with one another, where Weapon Knight and Naomez and General Skywalker all filled each other in on what they all had missed. Uh, so also, we have a fork team right now. It's Adam's here. Oh, actually? Uh, most of us, I think everybody's rocking like diamond. Uh, Mintz was rocking iron, but... Hold up. Thank you. Okay. We're going to Alabama. I think. I don't know what direction I'm going. Instead of reaching Alabama, they came across Romeo TK, who was the last bounty I had set for the event. Oh, that's him, that's him. Oh, that's him, that's him. Hold up, I can snipe him. Oh, he's in trouble. Oh! <laughs> Sniper! I am the sniper! Oh my Let's God. go! No one stands a chance in my way.
Dang. Okay, this guy was <laughs> shredded. Oh, there's this thing. I saw this thing. I saw this thing. Stack of advanced thing. bullets. I have two stacks of advanced bullets. <laughs> No, three stacks. Oh my gosh, take it. Just someone take it. Oh, he has an Just iron knife. Take. After the trio had killed Romeo TK and saw how stacked Romeo was and they just bathed in advanced bullets, they then went off to go and try to turn in the bounty ticket, which was their next mission. In the meantime, I sent the final location coordinates, which was where the Alamo was. M, Sensible, and Gaming Sam prepared to make their final stand at the Alamo. And so this was it. Everything had led to this final moment. All the death, all the wins, all the rewards had led to this very moment. And so I'm going to let you decide who do you think is going to win. Do you think it's going to be Jokui, Blincy, Weapon Knight's team, Sensible's team, or Mince's team, or the Sombrero Bros? Let me know down in the comments if you get it right. There's people already in there. They're on the top. 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 What's up? Alright, it's time guys. Hit him, hit him. Got him. Let's go! Sensible's team had managed to take out the Sombrero Bros, however, their victory would be short-lived. As when Sensible went down to go and pick up the loot, General Skywalker and Weapon Knight's team approached Sensible's team from behind, shocking M, and M would use a rocket launcher which ended up killing him and gaming Sam. No! Sensible, no, the whole team! I know! They blew themselves up too! In desperation, Sensible went over to Mint's team and would find himself a new team to be a part of. Hey. Yeah, yeah, Sensible, that's team. Sensible, you know me, that's team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, Weapon Knight's team would find Jaqui, who was out in the middle of the open, and they would absolutely rain fire on this person, killing them. Mints would add Blensey to the team, and just when these people thought there was a bit of hope, Weapon Knight's team would find them. Nope, uh -uh. run. However, these players' victory was short-lived, as they then realized that only one state could be the best state. As always, you want to say only one person can survive, huh? If you do, wait, let's do this, let's do this, hope. let's do this honorably. Heartbroken, the team honorably all separated from one another, giving each other time to prepare for the death that was about to happen. After everything these players have gone through together, only one of them was going to be able to survive. Now base, now base, now base, buddy, buddy, look at me. What's good? One team. What? Hello. Yeah. Get in the wall. Oh, oh yeah! <laughs> Double side, <laughs> Double side. <laughs> Let's go. Showtime in the mirror.
Likes to make you look good, coated with that past there, wanna disappear, so we with the planes. I love you, hey, Showtime in the mirror, chief up for that wall art, drop it with your eyelids, try again, violet. Maybe it's a new stain, fly away, pilot. Adams here had won the Minecraft players simulate the Hunger Games in the United States and secured that Hawaii was going to be the best state. And when I asked him for a comment about how he thought about winning, he then looked me in the eyes, pulled out his rocket launcher, and said that no state can be the best state. All of the states have their own unique abilities and own unique things that they have about one another, and then he ended his own life. Meaning that I didn't have a victor anymore, and that meant that I might have to do this another time.